Thank you, Dr. Mahavir and uh, Dr. Ajay, and thank you, Dr. Jayadev, for the invitation. So I must first congratulate you for the wonderfully wonderful way you have conducted this whole scientific extravaganza. The topic I will be covering in the next fifteen minutes or so is going to poke a thyroid nodule. My screen is visible properly. Yes, sir, it is visible. Yes. Okay. I think this is a very very common situation, and before we go ahead. Uh, we need to first understand what what is a thyroid nodule. So it's a discrete lesion which uh, present in the thyroid gland, and that should be radiologically distinct from the surrounding thyroid parenchyma. So the so first thing what we need to understand is so even if we are clinically getting a nodule, and so somebody might be having a nodular thyroid morphology, but if we are not able to discern a nodule on an ultrasound so that should not be called a thyroid nodule so this is unlike most of the situations where we go by the clinical diagnosis so this is thyroid nodule first of all we need to understand is a radiological diagnosis so this is the most important thing what we need to understand so that implies that whenever we are talking about a thyroid nodule we should have a radiologic evidence and confirmation of that nodule so there are different types we know that there are benign nodules and malignant nodules and 90% of the nodules are fortunately benign but the primary target of evaluating a thyroid nodule is to segregate out those 10% which are actually malignant so if the primary objective when you are going to evaluate a thyroid nodule is we need to understand that if that nodule is harboring a cancer do we need to detect it and we need to manage it appropriately so this is the most important aspect of uh, thyroid nodule diagnosis and management as a brief look at the epidemiology so prevalence is 4 to 7% it will go up with with age the females have more uh, chance of having nodules also um, however in in the ratio for malignant nodules it, it uh, the females Uh, so if a male is having a nodule so there is a high, slightly higher chance that it might be malignant so in a, in a male nodule should be evaluated with more caution so in clinical examination around 5% in women 1% in men in iodine sufficient population we know india is a sub, uh, in, uh, sufficient country and ultimately it's a radiological diagnosis and depending on the age and iodine sufficiency and other factors it might go up to 19 to 68% on an ultrasound so the first step is uh, how to ascertain the clinical background there are some factors like radiation therapy family history of thyroid cancer these are important the age is important younger age higher chance of malignancy uh, elderly higher chance of malignancy males higher chance of malignancy location in the isthmus higher chance of malignancy and the physical examination whether the nodule is firm or fixed how rapidly it uh, it uh, became large where the nodule is located and whether there are any compressive features or not so these are all important factors and having said that we need to understand that it's not all nodules in the neck are thyroid nodules you we can have congenital conditions infections like tuberculosis or uh, or or their neck there can be neck abscess or cervical lymph node which might mimic a thyroid nodule so an ultrasound diagnosis again is usually able to differentiate between the two so a very important entity if there is a family uh, history of papillary thyroid carcinoma medullary thyroid carcinoma or thyroid cancer syndromes like cowden syndrome or men2 or warner then again you need to be very very careful so you need to be very very sure that before you label that the nodule is benign so after you have gone through the physical examination and history check the thyroid the next step is to check the thyroid function status so you do a thyroid profile if the tsh is normal or if the tsh is elevated elevated then uh, yeah, so you you go ahead with the evaluation as per protocol but if the tsh is low so we will deviate from the standard protocol so we need to get a thyroid scan done at that particular stage so in 20 uh, maybe two decades back it was like okay you have a thyroid nodule you get a thyroid scan so thyroid scan has no role unless the tsh is low 
So for a routine evaluation, there is for a, with a normal TSH on an elevated DSH. Please do not get a thyroid scan done. It's not going to anyway add to any additional information. So if in the th the thyroid scan, it can be a hot nodule or it can be uh, a, a, a like that occurs in toxic autonomous nodule, or it can be part of a MNG where where part or it can be part of a uh, maybe Graves disease where the other lobe is silent, but Usually, uh, most of the cases, if we are getting a hot nodule, we more or less have the diagnosis of toxic autonomous nodule. The treatment for that is radioiodine ablation. Your chance of malignancy is practically less. You don't need to get an FNAC. You can go for radioiodine ablation. And uh, prior to that, you might, the person might require uh, antithyroid medications for uh, normalizing the thyroid profile. So thyroglobulin, again, as a routine assessment does not have any role in evaluation of thyroid nodule. Only uh, it's in the follow-up of thyroid malignancy, thy thyroid papillary thyroid cancer or follicular thyroid cancer. Thyroglobulin has a role. It does not have any other role just for routine diagnosis. So don't get a thyroglobulin level if you have found a nodule on the ultrasound. Calcitonin, it, it's uh, we do not have any strong evidence to go for it or not go for it. But obviously, if there is a family history of medullary thyroid carcinoma or there are ultrasound features which are suggestive of uh, medullary thyroid carcinoma, you might go for calcitonin. Again, routine calcitonin measurement, most probably we do not have any evidence to suggest it. TPO antibody, you might get it uh, done. It's a marker of thyroid autoimmunity. Again, no definitive role as such in assessment of whether there is malignancy or not. So getting a thyroid peroxide as antibody most, most probably not going to help in, in the management of a thyroid nodule. So as I already told, if there is suppressed TSH, if there is a toxic autonomous nodule, you need to go for a radioiodine scan. So this is the most important step is to get an ultrasound. So the so ultrasound will guide us when to poke a nodule, coming back to our main topic, whether when to follow it up or we, we can just leave it. So most of the information related to a thyroid nodule has to be depend uh, depends on the findings in the ultrasound. This is how a normal thyroid will look. So this is the right lobe. This is the left lobe. You can see the surrounding muscles. The thyroid is slightly more echogenic than the surrounding muscles. So the strap muscles are hypoechoic as compared to the thyroid nodule. So usually a B-mode grayscale ultrasound is done. Sometimes to assess vascularity, you can do color doppler and there are some studies related to elastography as well. So what are the features we need to look into ultrasound? The most important is echogenicity. I already told that. So if you are getting a hyper nodule, so again, most probably, so that is a safe thing. So the alarming situation is if you are getting a hyper nodule. And the composition is also very important. So if it's, a, if you can see here, if it's a cystic nodule, so uh, so that that uh, that means the chance of this is like a cystic nodule. The chance of malignancy is practically very 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 less. So these are the different compositions. So this is a cystic nodule. So if you have a cyst, partly cystic, partly solid component, it does not if it rule out malignancy in any way. If it's totally cystic, then only malignancy can be ruled out. If it's pre predominantly solid, obviously you need to look into the uh, echogenicity of the nodule. And there is another entity, entity called spongiform, multiple tiny cystic species. In that case, also the chance of malignancy is very, very less. So if it's a cystic nodule or if it's a spongiform nodule, you, you are more or less in a safe zone. But in all other situations, you need to look into other factors also. So echogenicity. If it's so, you can see the first nodule. This is hyperequic. It's more uh, dense than the rest of the thyroid gland. So again, that is something which is reassuring. So if you get a hyperequic nodule, the chances of malignancy is less. If it's an isoequic nodule, so same consistency as rest of the thyroid, or hypoequic nodule, so then you you, you need you need to be careful, and that increases the chance of malignancy. So you, first you look into the composition, then you look into the echogenicity of the nodule, hypoechoic nodule, you need to be careful. Now you need to, need to look into the shape of the nodule. If the nodule is taller than wider in the transverse view, the chance of malignancy is more. 
So that occurs because of the rapid expansion of the th malignant nodule. And if you have irregular margins, it's understood that the chance of malignancy is again going to be more. So these are all alarming signs. So smooth uh, nodule, chance of malignancy less. If it's irregular nodule, infiltrative nodule, uh, showing extra thyroid uh, invasion. So all these are features suggestive of uh, malignancy and you need to uh, be careful. So now there are some calcification patterns. So if you have micro calcification, like you see here, so and irregular borders, again, suggestive of malignancy, interrupted eggshell calcification. So again, suggestive of malignancy. So, but there are some patterns of calcification which, which do not suggest malignancy. So, and also another important uh, factor is lymph node. So you need to look into the lymph node character. So if you are looking into an ecogenic foci dot like less than uh, one millimeter, that is called micro calcification. If it's more than one millimeter, that is called macro calcification. There can be cometal artifacts, again, suggestive of benign nature of the nodule. Vascularity is another important factor. So if it's if it shows internal uh, vascularity as well as peripheral vascularity, the chances of malignancy is higher. So there are two essential classifications which guide us from the ultrasound fi findings, whether we need to go for FNAC or not. One is the ATA uh, uh, nodule sonographic pattern. So there are patterns like highly suspicious pattern like my micro calcifications with hypoechoic nodules, hypo uh, echoic irregular margins, hypoechoic taller than white. So these are conditions we have already discussed suggestive of highly suspicious of malignancy. So even with a nodule more than one centimeter, you need to go for an FNAC. There are some like with intermediate suspicions pattern, hypoechoic nodule with solid or solid nodule with, with regular margins, hypoechoic uh, solid nodule, uh, uh, hypoechoic solid regular margin nodule. So these are features where you need the suspicion for malignancy is intermittent in the range of 10 to 20%. Whereas if you have hyperechoic nodule, a cystic nodule, the chances uh, of malignancy goes down. If you have a spongy form nodule or a partial uh, or a cystic nodule, the chance of malignancy is very, very less. So this is the ATA, American Thyroid Association recommendation. Highly suspicious pattern, go for an FNAC at more than one centimeter. Intermediate suspicion pattern, like hyperechoic nodule with smooth margins without calcification or uh, taller than uh, wide than uh, taller than wide in shape, so you go for an FNAC even at one centimeter. Low suspicious pattern like isoechoic or hyperechoic solid nodule or partially cystic nodule with eccentric solid areas, you go for FNAC at more than 1.5 centimeter. Very low suspicion and benign nodules are spongiform or partially cystic nodules without any of the above sonographic features or purely cystic nodules. In those cases, you don't require to do for an FNAC. Very low suspicion pattern. You need to go for an FNAC at more than two centimeter. The TRADS is the other way they have classified uh, the different nodules according to uh, the radiologic criteria. So they have given points according to composition, ecogenicity, shape, margin. So these are the uh, 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 and calcification. So, so these are the patterns which uh, where points have been assigned. So, and uh, if it's zero points, it's TR, TR1, two points, TR2, three points, TR3, four to six, TR4, seven points or more, TR5. So, most, so ideally, a radiologist should be providing a TR score for the ultrasound, uh, for the nodule which has been detected in the ultrasound. And we can, so there are classifications. So, depending on uh, if that if it's still at five, you need to go for FNAC at more than one centimeter, four to six at 1.5 centimeter, more than three, uh, TRAT at three, you need to go for FNAC at more than 2.5 centimeter. So these are the TRAT classification. So either you can follow the ATA class guideline or you can follow the ACR TRAT guideline to decide whether FNAC is required. So again, there are some features on the ultrasound of the neck nodes which is suggestive of thyroid possibility of uh, malignancy. So micro calcification, peripheral vascularity, hyperechogenicity, and uh, round shape. So these are features which can predict uh, the malignant nature of a lymph node. So if you have a lymph node which are having these features, you need to get an FNAC simultaneously, both from the thyroid nodule as well as from the uh, lymph node. So if you are getting a suspicious lymph node, so you should get FNAC from both. So finally, 
So should you get an FNA done? It depends on first of all clinical information, then step three, you ultrasound features, and stay finally you look into the size of the nodule and that will guide you whether you need an FNAC done. So these are the current summary of various guidelines. There are other guidelines also. I'm not going to the details of that. So more or less ACR, uh, TRADS or ATA is the, uh, the standard way which we uh, which helps us decide to go for whether to go for an FNAC or not. And once you get an FNAC, you should ideally, the pathologist should label the thyroid nodule as one to six of Bethesda, where five to six, the chance of malignancy is very, very high. The treatment will be near total thyroidectomy or as, along with associated uh, lymph node uh, exploration of the node. And in case of three or four, you can go for molecular testing or lobectomy. And if you detect FNAC on the, uh, on the FNAC suggests there is a malignancy, five or six, you need to go for total thyroidectomy. So finally, to recap, first of all, first step, if you get a thyroid nodule, ascertain the clinical background, then check thyroid function, TSH low, it's a toxic autonomous nodule, you can go for a radioiodine ablation. Next step, get an ultrasound. Then if you get, after get, getting an ultrasound, classify it according to one of the criteria, which will help us uh, assess whether to go for FNAC or not. Once you get an FNAC, interpret according to the Bethesda category. So, so I haven't gone into gone into molecular testing details. So, so this is uh, this if available, you can consider for uh, patients who are having Bethesda three or four, uh, having intermediate suspicion of malignancy. So there are some which help us to rule out, or some which might help us to confirm whether malignancy is present. And finally, if you get a nodule which is suggestive of malignancy, you need to go for surgery. Thank you once again for your patient listening.